Not much uh, to report from last night. Uh, well, again, injury-wise, dealing with a couple of things here and there, but you know, nothing that uh, – any definitiveness right now. So we'll see what, what Wednesday brings, a couple more days. But no one, you know, that's that's from yesterday that was any – we had nobody – real issues. So we'll see where we are come Wednesday. But as of right now, just working through all the normal bumps and bruises at week eight. What kind of conversation have you had with Colt in the aftermath of all that happened on special teams yesterday? Yeah, watch tape together. Uh, see where see where it went wrong. Uh, see what what issues we had and where they came up and uh, where we can fix them. You know what things we can do differently to to make sure we put uh, a better uh, execution on the field, better schematics on the field, whatever that may be, uh, to help us be better than it was on Sunday because we can't have that. Uh, that's not uh, uh, not at all acceptable in that regard. So. Um, got to find some solutions, and again, it can come a lot of different ways. Um, we're, work, we're working hard on it today on what we can do differently to, to help that process out. It seemed like there were some issues maybe with hang time and also tackling, absolutely. What can you do to fix that? Is that an accurate assessment? As yeah, well? I think that's accurate. I think we need to do a better job. I think Stoney can do a better job of uh, putting the ball uh, in the air longer, give us a chance to cover, because the reality of it is we, we made some personnel changes uh, on that punt unit. Um, after the block punts early in the season, try to settle it down, um, which we've done. They've done a really nice job protecting the punter, uh, but we've sacrificed a little bit of speed and coverage ability with, with some of the bigger bodies in there um, to protect the punter. And when you do that, the ball's got to hang up further, and we have to have a chance to get down the field and cover. Um, you know, obviously we're down some gunners because those guys are now, you know, playing more football for us with, with Nick Westbrook and Jarvis was one of the gunners too. And, um, you know, so we got to do a better job of complimenting each other in each phase of the punt unit. Uh, and right now we're not, we're not doing a good enough job of that. You know, we're, our hang time I think is averaging somewhere around 4-0, which has got to be higher than that and to give ourselves a chance. Do you need to get, starters? Do you need to get more starters involved in that unit? Yeah, we'll look at that. I mean, all, all three tight ends are on a unit, you know, um, some guys we have that, that have started are on there. But, yeah, we'll look at that, certainly. If that's a, an avenue to help improve it, we'll improve it. And, and they, if, if we feel like that can get us um, a better coverage unit, then certainly we'll ask those guys to play. Does that hang time become maybe even more of an issue when Stone, a guy like Stone has kicked it as far as he does? Is that actually maybe hurt when the hang time? Right now, it, it, is, it is hurting us, yes. I mean, we're, some of the punts that we've had where you know, the, the, it gets down the field and it goes long down the field, but it doesn't hang up in the air and give us enough time to get down there to cover, um, puts us in a tough spot. And then our fundamentals of it got to be better too. You know, we, we were in position yesterday. Uh, you know, the first punt return should have never got out. We should have been able to get them on the ground, and we don't um, because we miss a tackle or two. And then all of a sudden you miss two tackles and a, and a punt return, and in the NFL it's out. And – um, so we got to be better there fundamentally, and then um, we can find some ways personnel-wise to help us. And then you know there's some things schematically we can do to help our guys as well. So look, it's it's an all hands on deck approach to getting getting solutions to some of our issues. And and again, we've we've fixed previous issues, and now other issues are showing up that we have to find a way to um, get better at quickly. Because again, we we can't give up the return yards that we gave up. So the Colt can turn the special teams unit around. Um, I mean, Colt, Colt's played a lot of football in the NFL, too. He's seen, he played for eight years as a player. Um, he was under one of the best special teams coaches in football, I think, and Darren Simmons in Cincinnati. So um, he's, got the, he's got the experience and the wherewithal to understand uh, where the special teams issues are. And then you got Anthony Levine in there with him, um, who also has seen a lot and played a lot and, uh, under John Harbaugh in, in Baltimore. So those guys got great special teams experience. They understand what they're looking at and what there is, and, and we have to do um, a better job all the way around. Uh, but those guys, those guys know special teams, and they, they, they know what the solutions are, and we have to make sure we implement them and do them um, because I think they're good young coaches. Um, but, again, we're, they're young coaches too, just like there's a couple of us are, and uh, we have to do a better job all the way around. There are a lot of guys who, who play, their examples abound, who, mm -hmm. who played well, who don't necessarily coach well. And you, you said the same thing about solutions after, after the punt block. But isn't the key to find the solutions before the problems happen? Yeah, sometimes that sometimes problems show up that you don't necessarily anticipate. Um, when those things, you you make a change and, and it's a give and take, and those things can pop up on on you. And again, you know we've got to find ways to get the ball in position for us to cover and get guys down there. And you know I'd love to force some more fair catches and not give returners a chance to, to get the ball in their hands and, and get up the field. So. Certainly, there's there is uh, a proactive part of it. You want to be ahead of the curve, um, but then when you're not, you got to find ways to react and fix it quickly. So that that's where we're at right now. 
But do you have any regret. major regret about letting loose some of those core special teamers when it came to personnel decisions on cut day? Um, no, I mean, I mean, really, there's, there's, there was maybe one. You know, I, who would you be referring to? Just Hassan or Matt Jackson or some of these guys that took a lot of spe- Anthony Kendall special teams reps the last couple of years. Yeah, I mean, we had Anthony Kendall on the practice squad with, and he, we were trying to get to a point where maybe he was healthy. But then our roster moves, and you know, we had to make some moves to do some other things. But yeah, I mean, there's there's a um, you know there's a place for those special teams guys on your roster, and we felt like we had enough of them uh, at the cut down date, and felt good about where we were at. And, and right now, it's just not been good enough. So we can look back in hindsight and. S- that might 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 have helped, might not have. I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, right now we are where we are, and we got to find a way to get it get it corrected. Has this team regressed in some areas, or is it more a product of your flaws exposed by playing two teams who are Super Bowl caliber on the road? Uh, no, I don't think I don't think we've regressed. I think we continue to make strides. I think we're getting better. I thought we played that first half of offensive football was as good as we played offensively all year against a defense that I thought was really, really good. Um, and we found ways to make plays and move the ball. I mean, I think we had eight explosive plays in a game, and that usually, again, is going to put you in pretty good position in most weeks to have a chance to win. Um, you know, defensively, we still do uh, we still do a lot of really good things. And again, we we got uh, teams like Detroit are going to make their plays. They're, it's a good football team. They're a contending team for a reason, um, and so we knew they're going to have they're going to have opportunities to make plays, and they made some, and, and we made some. But um, we got to stop giving teams opportunities to beat us, which we do uh, too much of. You know, when you give them five five possessions to start inside their territory, uh, when you turn a ball over four times, um, you're not doing anything that's going to help you win a game. And right now, we got to find ways to eliminate those mistakes, and I got to do a better job of of helping the quarterbacks not make those decisions. We got to do a better job of holding on to the football when we have it in our hands. Um, and then again, we got to fix the special teams problems that we have currently. So I see improvement in a lot of areas and I know it doesn't look like it. And we've been, you know, two really good football teams that, um, you know, took advantage of our mistakes. And that's what the good teams in this league do is they punish you when you make mistakes and, and we made too many and they punished us. And uh, there is things that I'm encouraged by. There's things that are getting better every week. And I think we're closer than it may appear. Um, in a lot of areas, uh, but we just we got to keep pushing forward. Given how you guys gained 416 yards yesterday, but only scored 14 points. I mean, outside of that first and goal situation, yeah. What is behind moving up and down the field, but not being able to punch it in? Yeah, that I mean that's a critical part. That would have been that would have been nice to get 21 points there uh, before the half ended. That would have been a, a pretty solid first half. Um, and again, we just our, our execution wanes in, in the second half. You know, we get the first come out uh, against the in the first drive of the third quarter, and we got rid in a great spot. We got a great mismatch with him on a linebacker, and, and we get tackled. You know, a, a half a yard short of the sticks, and we got a punt. Um, and then we had a really bad series where we just kind of went two incompletions, and then got to third and ten. And that's not you know third and ten is a tough a tough spot for us right now. We're not. Uh, super, super efficient on third and longs. It's, that's kind of been our Achilles heel in the second half is getting behind those sticks, whereas in the first half, it was multiple times we didn't even hit a third down in some of those drives. Um, so that's the balance, and, and we're not consistent enough long enough over the course of a, uh, over the course of a game right now, and, and we need to be. At the start of, a, at the start of, a, of another week, you have some optimism. Will's back this Sunday? Yeah, we'll, we'll see where he's at. Um, I'm, I'm optimistic he's, he's in a better place after some rest. Um, he's probably going to take another day or two of rest, and then we'll see what he looks like uh, Wednesday. So I can't comment with any certainty what will be the case, but I'm hopeful that um, he's closer to feeling like 100% uh, or as close to that as he can so he can go out there and play. How would you classify the turnover yesterday? And I guess the other way to ask that is early in the season there were some sort of inexplicable decisions that led to him, and it felt like if you clean those up, you'll be fine. Yeah. Yesterday there's four. Are those inexplicable? Are they great defensive plays? How do you clean um, the, fir- the first one was, was one that, that – you know, is in line with those early ones that, you know, we called the play action pass. You know, we, we got a bunch of guys devoted to protection. It's kind of a two man route, three level throw with the back out. Um, they covered it, you know, just, and that's what happens sometimes. The defense covers the play. You know, Mason goes to draw on the, on the high cross and, and the safety rips down out of quarters and he kind of cuts it off. And so he's going to draw and then he, he see, feels the safety drive it. And then he sort of tries to go check the ball. Then as he's getting hit and throws the ball right to the other defender, whereas like it's second and six, just, Look, if there's nothing there, one throw it away or two take the sack. Uh, don't put us in that spot. So that was that one was a bad one. Um, the second one was, um, you know, that interception was one that happens to quarterbacks. The post stage is in the middle of the field. They cut it. 
Uh, we got the high cross coming there. The safety just cuts it. Uh, we have a route on the outside that you know has a shot, but um, the safety came out of the middle and, and made a nice play. Those things happen to quarterbacks. That's not necessarily a decision making error. Um, and then we just get two balls punched out. You know, Red's got a jet sweep and he's in traffic, and they just punch it out. Uh, and then you know, Chig's got one where it just gets punched out again. So. You know, fighting through traffic, trying to get another yard or two, guys trying to do something with it uh, and, and put the ball in harm's way. It's not secured the way it's supposed to be. And it's things we talk about every week. And, um, you know, they, they got punched out. And so it's – those ones aren't inexplicable. Those are just, you know, the defense making a play on the football and us not taking care of it well enough. Was this a key defense to, uh, I guess, to, to St. Brown and to Raymond? Those guys looked like they were particularly open. What, what did they do to get those guys in the clear? So yeah, they were. Um, they were. There was, I think, three, three plays down there that – uh, you know, we're in man coverage in the low red zone. Uh, it's it's an eye discipline thing. Uh, the first one, um, the one that I'm on, Ross St. Brown, you know, Baker's in there in man coverage, and he takes his eyes off to go. He, they feel the run action. He takes his eyes off him, and he slips out. He should be right there on him. His eyes should be on him. Um, the one to Jarvis, they run an uh, orbit motion, and as we go to run with it, he kind of starts to – takes his eyes off him and starts to run, and they put their foot in the ground and come back in the snap. Uh, so he gets caught out of position, and then um, – on the on the first, I think it was the first one, the one of the tight end in the flat. You know, it's the same thing. They go in a, in a fast motion. You know, and those are hard. That's the hard part about playing the lines and what they do with their motion is that they, you know, you got to pass it off, and so it's supposed to get passed off, uh, and ultimately does it, and he ends up open for a touchdown. So the it's just more the eye discipline and and the um, you know tracking of people uh, and some of those things that are designed to give you conflict, uh, being more disciplined with our eyes. Yeah when reflecting on the first seven games, that the, the ball just hasn't bounced the team's way this year. Do you believe that? Um, there's moments where it feels like that, but there's also a part of uh, a part of football where you know you have to make you have to make your own luck to some degree too. You know, you got those those things that feel like luck and feel like the bounces go your way or don't go your way. Um, part of that is is making it happen for yourself too. You know, we've but we've also given away a lot, and that's um, there's moments where it feels like like. You know, there's like three plays a game where it's like, what in the world is happening right now? Like, how does this even happen? Um, but I, you know, I, there's a part of the ball bouncing your way. Like, good teams have to kind of just goes your way sometimes. You know, the ball, they end up with the ball. They make plays in the ball. Um, there's a momentum factor that it's hard to, like, pinpoint what that is. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there's, there's definitely times where it's felt that way. But, again, I, I'm – more in the line of you sort of have to create those opportunities and make that you have to make your luck a bit too in this league and, and we've not done a good enough job of it. When you look at the state of this franchise, uh, yep. do you feel that it's shifted a lot or at all from coming into the season to now having, you know, tied with Carolina for the worst record in the league? I'm not quite not quite sure. Like the, the state of the franchise, like the, the optimism, the the stated goal. The, yeah. where you guys felt you would be and the direction that the franchise is going. Yeah, I, I think our, our record is what it is. Um, it's not indicative to me of what I think we're capable of. That's the first thing. Um, and the second thing is, no, I, I don't. My, my vision and my belief and what, what we're going to do and how we're doing it um, hasn't had the results to show for it yet, and that's disappointing. Um, I, was, I was hopeful. Um, I was anticipating uh, better than where we're at right now. And, and that's just the reality. Um, but we're not there. And at the end of the day, the vision, my belief, and, and the people here and the players here uh, is that we should be better and we need to be better. And I know where we're headed. I believe in it very much. Um, and those are things that happen when you're, when you're in a dark spot. I mean, these, these years are, are challenging. Um, they challenge your vision. They challenge your leadership. And, and those are all things that um, come with being in your first year. But I'm, I'm about as determined as I've ever been to, to get it right and get it fixed um, and keep keep on the track that I believe that we're on and um, we got to do some things better all the way around but I'm, I'm not at all dissuaded from from where I think we're capable of being yeah, also pointed to some teams that have gotten good that had bad first years and kind of said just trust me mm -hmm. are you are you on the same page with that as far as what I'm saying to you in terms of just trust him just trust you guys it, it'll get better well, I mean, again, I've said this before, but I think the, the definition of, of faith and trust is, is believing in something you don't have uh, any proof of at the moment. You know, and right now we don't have proof. Um, we have nothing tangible to show for what our process is, how we do things, um, because it's a production-based business and a results-based business, you know, and we're one in six, and that is what it is. 
Um, but I do have faith in, in where we're headed, and I do have faith uh, in how we go about our business here and, and what that's going to bring for us. So um, I'm, not asking, I'm not asking you guys to trust me necessarily, but um, I know that I have trust in the people that I'm working with and, and what, we're, what we're doing and how we're doing it. Ryan, what about uh, special teams or you know, other personnel moves, whatever it would be, at what point would your belief in what you're just talking about be shaken a little bit. You're, you're talking about finding the play indicative of what you believe you can be. Mm -hmm. How long can you go without that play before your own faith gets tested? Oh, I, I you you have to persevere. You have to. There's a resilience to it, um, and it's it's challenging. Certainly, um, there's 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 days where um, you got to keep finding that, and you got to keep pushing through it, knowing that you at the end result of what you believe the process is that you're going to get there, um, and that's what I do. And there's there's things that we have to get better at. There's things that we need to make improvements on. Um, there's things that I've had to adapt, uh, and I've had to find different ways that maybe this isn't exactly what I thought in the moment. Um, and we got to grow, and we got to adapt, and we got to maybe do something a little bit different. And I think as long as you're open to that, and you're flexible to it, um, you can keep keep pushing and keep working through the things that are challenging. And right now we're we're right in the midst of it. And these are these challenges are things that I think are going to make us better. Uh, at the end of the day, it's going to make us a, um, a a harder football team. It's going to make us. Uh, in a put us in a position, I think, to deal with adversity better in the future as we fight through it. Um, but these are those are all things that, that come with it. And right now, at one and six, you know, we're we're right we're right in the thick of it right now, and we got to find our way out. How patient has Amy been through this process as you guys go through these struggles? Yeah, look, none of us are that patient, you know. Um, and again, any conversation with her, I'll, I'll leave between us. But um, at the end of the day, you know, we 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 communicate, we speak, we talk. Um, all, all of us, uh, you know, with, between Rand and Chad and myself and, and Amy, we, we have the conversations that we need to have. Um, we lay it out. There's no uh, sugarcoating anything, and, and we know what, what the plan is and where we're, where we're headed and how we're going to get there. Um, but, yeah, those, those things are, are – it's all part of it, you know. It's all – there's – you know, you're only as patient as, you know, you know what – it's the NFL. There, there's not a lot of patience anywhere in the NFL, and, and we got to find a way to, um, you know, get better. You respond super well to negative plays over the course of a game. Examples like a turnover, then a quick score uh, on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah. You talked about some sideline energy, but can you diagnose a root cause of some of that, you know, response? Um, no, that's that's been the hardest part so far for, for us, I think, is um, finding ways to complement each other the right way. And, you know, we go down, we turn the ball over early in the game, and they score. It's 7 nothing, And then we find a way to climb back in. It's... It's seven seven, uh, and then we then we give up a big kick return, and they score. Now it's fourteen seven, and then we come back and answer, and it's fourteen fourteen. And so now we're kind of in this back and forth, and then you go to fourteen fourteen, and then we give up the the seventy yard touchdown run. Now it's twenty one fourteen, and then now it just starts to it's like the back and forth. It's like it's hard to keep up doing that, and we have to do a better job in all three phases of complementing good play, and we haven't done that yet. We haven't complemented. Um, a big stop on defense with a score on offense. We haven't complimented a, a big answer on offense with a stop on defense. It feels like it's happened all year long. Um, and, and the answer is that how do you improve that is you just have to go make the play when you need to make it. And right now we're not in that phase and um, we're just sort of out of sync when it comes to complimenting each other in all three phases. And we have, it's, it's really making it hard on us to, to capture momentum, especially with against really good teams on the road. Um, and those things uh, make it challenging to go win a game when you, when you can't quite flip the momentum in your favor and you can't quite flip the execution in your favor, uh, we keep getting in these spots where we're not doing a good enough job helping each other out. And we gotta, we've addressed it, we talk about it. Um, it's all things that, that guys are aware of. And you know, I thought the early part of that game in, in the first half, we did a much better job answering when something either negative happened or something that we, we found a way to answer. Um, we just didn't sustain it for the entirety of the game. Some of the guys have mentioned like, Adversity, the energy gets down, the vibes aren't right on the sideline. As far as a leadership perspective, mm -hmm. who are some of the guys that you know, okay, that energy's down. I could depend on him and he's going to get it back up. Yeah, I think the guys that you see right now, you know, playing the best football for us, it's, it's Tony Pollard. I thought Calvin uh, answered in a big way this week uh, in terms of his production and his, his, his knowing that we rely on him to make big plays and he made them. Um, I think the offensive line wise, like Lloyd does a great job keeping things together up front. Um, so those, those are the guys and on defense, it's, 
you know, I'm watching Jeff and Arden in the last, you know, it's 52 to 14, and they're, they're still down there trying to knock the hell out of the ball carrier. I mean, those are the things that I look at that gives me um, confidence that we're make, like, we have the right things in play. We have the right mentality. Our best players are playing their ass off uh, at the end of a game when we're not winning, and, and those are the things that make me – believe in, in what I'm seeing there. We just have to clean up the things that are losing us games. But uh, the core of what we need is there. Talk about having, more, having your vision. Just how long term is that? Is there a concrete time where you expect the vision needs to be executed by then? Uh, no, I think you got to be really careful with timelines because there's um, there. It's not linear. You know what I mean? It's not you're not just constantly doing this. There's there's dips and then you, there's it, it doesn't always just go right the way you expect it to go. So um, you have to be mindful of, of what you, what you put on it, um, but I think there's lots of lots of examples around the league of you know of, of how you can go about that in, in a relatively quick manner. Um, you know, the team we just played is, is one of them. Um, the in Cincinnati was that way, and San Francisco. There's there's teams that that show you that it's you know there's a there's a relative uh, idea of what you'd like it to look like, and it's you know those are the things that you you try to match it up with, and, and hope that you can do the same thing. You'll have a chance to, to get back on the practice field this week. No, not this week. Not this week. He'll be he'll be a little bit longer. Paid Cedric Gray being activated or is that? Uh, we'll see. Okay. We'll see. Uh, yes, I anticipate him likely being active, but we gotta we gotta figure out the corresponding moves there as well. So and Jerome, try to get him more in the mix this week. Yeah, he'll Jerome be Baker. involved. Last week was just more of a uh, you know he didn't get here till late Thursday night. Um, we didn't practice much Thursday because of the travel and didn't want to put him in a in a spot to go practice really hard after traveling and all that. And then by the time we get to Friday, the, the plan was sort of in place. And so just get him comfortable, get him back in the building, and then we'll get going this week with him. Do anything to uh, kind of enhance your chances of, of blocking it down moving forward? Um, no, I think we're, we're still in the same in the same mode. I think there was, again, some good and some bad uh, stuff that's got to get cleaned up. But, um, you know, again, I think that the, the offensive line as a whole, I think, is getting incrementally better every week. And so we're just going to keep keep the process moving. Can I ask about the last month, the, the four goal line plays? I understand why you wanted to throw the football there. Yeah. Why is it better to do that from the shotgun than getting under center where they've got to acknowledge the run? Uh, some of it's for the you know the quarterback to be able to see and process it. Um, you know, it's uh, those things are always are always easy to talk about. You know, the next day, um, same as the the short yardage sequence last week in Buffalo. Um, you know, it, the, you question it when it doesn't work. And uh, that's usually how it goes. So yeah, could could I have run the ball there once and and, and bang a timeout? Certainly I could have. Um, I just felt like the the best thing for us was to try to get uh, to get the ball in the end zone through the air. And and look, if it, if it worked and we scored there, and no one's asking a question on on the plays, even if it took us to fourth down to get it. So I understand how it works, um, and we we review that process and where we could have been better. Um, you know, could we have run the ball? How would we have done it? What would have been the best thing? Uh, again, in hindsight, that it didn't work. Um, what could we have done better? So that's how I take those things. I mean, in, in the moment, I felt good about what we called. I liked the plays. or plays we had a lot of reps on. Um, they were built, you know, for that those coverages down there. And so had confidence in it, and, and ultimately it didn't work. Um, and so that's, you know, that's that's why I could have to answer the question about, you know, running the football down there. So um, that's probably the best way to put it. Running it, but selling the run. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, it's, it's, there's, yeah, there's definitely things that, that you can do there um, to sell the run, certainly. I mean, we had a the touchdown to, to Nick Westbrook was a, was a run sell out of the gun, you know, so it's, again, back, it's all, it's all play selection at that point. What's, what's kind of the, maybe the mental challenge for you guys after going through a couple games like you, like you have the past couple weeks and trying to, I don't know, just kind of restore confidence moving forward. Yeah, I think it's the, the mental challenge is having a short memory um, and being able to flush it. Um, as frustrating, disappointing, and as, as frankly embarrassing as some of you know, the past couple of games have been, I think the only productive thing you can do is flush it and move on and, and attack the next week. That's what the NFL is with you know playing every single week and having great competition every single week. So, I mean, it, obviously we're feeling very disappointed and, and rough today, but like I said, the only productive thing we'll be to do is to flush it and move on. Pretty much the first month of the season talking about the unforced errors that you guys had and you could clean them up. It felt like this team was going to get over that hump. 
how frustrating is it that they, they're still existing, that the turnovers are there, and that it almost feels like you're further away now maybe than you were? Yeah, I mean, like you said, the turnover, all those errors seem to still be there. Um, and, and that's definitely frustrating because I think you always want to see improvement. You know, as the year goes on, it feels like that's not happening. And um, we fortunately, we have a ton more opportunities to, to keep improving on that. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's definitely frustrating to have that happen. Peter, is it fair to call this a fragile football team right now? Um, I'm not 100% sure what you mean by that in terms uh, of fragile, but. It goes wrong and, and you guys kind of fall apart. Yeah, I think our responses to kind of some of those um, inflection points, I, I like to think of them as like, you know, turnover, or, um, you know, a long touchdown, something like that. I think we haven't we haven't responded well. Um, you know, guy, I, I don't know if necessarily we're fragile players, but I think we just our execution after those moments has not been good, and um, that's what's costing us in these games. There's been a lot of discussion about the sequence at the goal line. Of where you want to pass the ball for strict because I know it's not your job to call the plays, but I'm assuming as an offensive lineman, you'd like an opportunity to ram that thing in. Uh, and it's kind of a loaded question because an offensive lineman is always going to say they want to run the ball whenever. So um, I respect I respect coaches coaches plan and and everything and his and his game and um, his calling. Um, you know they were in their base defense for a lot of that I think so that you know that's primed to stop the run too. So. That's kind of what they were trying to trying to show to us. So um, I, I'm not going to question him. He's the one doing the game plan, and he's the one who knows the you know knows the offense like he does. And we just got to execute. As Brian's tone, as Bill's tone, you feel like the coaching staff's tone has changed through this. Are they getting angry? Are they doing anything to kind of jolt change or? Are they trying to remain steady? In which case, do you see that? Working? Yeah, I think there's probably been a little bit more of a collective frustration with all of us, and including our staff, the past couple of weeks, just because we've, you know, had so many, so many, uh, so many issues, and um, but understandably so. I think that's the coach's the coach's job to get that out of us, and that if that takes being being a little more intense, being a little more upset about things, then then so be it. And I think. Um, I think that's that's not a bad thing for a team who's not performing the way we are. Do you feel like it's still the same mistakes cropping up week after week, or is it different mistakes? Fix one thing and another thing goes crazy. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably say more different mistakes. I don't think there's any been like big, big repeat offenders that have that have shown up from what I can remember. Um, obviously, there might be a couple here and there, but I think you know there are, there are some differences there. Yeah, in terms. What's it been like, I guess, dealing with all the changes uh, at right tackle as, as a group? Yeah, I mean, I think you always want continuity in a line. Um, and, and so that's been a little bit hard to find at that position for us at this point. But I think our room is connected enough to where I feel like, you know, we all work well together to a point and we all know what, what the expectation is where we feel like every every guy in our room and or at least who will be active will be able to step up to that to that plate and, and perform. So I think you know, it's not been that bad, but obviously you'd like to have a, a group of five and you know, probably a little more so for Dylan and, and, and Kush on the right side in terms of communication since, you know, obviously my side doesn't really interact a ton on the, you know, at, at the at the snap with them. But um, you obviously like continuity, but I, I think our room gets, has the, has the chemistry to where we can kind of communicate with whoever's in there. Who takes the leadership in the room for you right now among the players? Yeah, I think Lloyd is probably, our biggest leader, obviously, is a captain, and um, you know I, I do my best to to try to be a voice in the room. And obviously, the other guys like Dan, even even not not playing, is is a, is a great leader for us. So um, I don't think I don't think it's a, uh, a leadership issue. I think Lloyd's done a great job of keeping us together. I think it's just a um, consistent performance issue. You know? One of your hold calls, quote unquote, objectionable. Say it again. Was one of the hold calls against you? If you ask me about any any calls against me, I'd probably say they're all objectionable. <laughs> That's just me. Um, it is what it is. Um, you can't put yourself in those positions um, where you could get a holding. You know, you, it, and it goes back to technique and being disciplined with that. And it's not like they're just going to call them out of thin air. Um, and you can't, whether it's objectionable or not, it's still called and it's still a penalty. And that's that's on me at the end of the day, and I've got to be better to where I'm not in a position where 
I'm getting I'm getting uh, the referees even seeing anything to to call something. You talked about being embarrassed uh, about the last couple of games, but we know in the NFL you're really never as bad as your worst game or as, as good as your best. Where do you find the confidence needed to succeed? Yeah, I mean, I think, and I've you know I've had the misfortune of being a part of some losses like this in, in college a little bit, so I, I kind of know the feeling and. I still think that there are stuff we can build on. I thought we've, you know, we've run the ball well at times. I mean, Ridd had a hell of a game. I thought, especially in just the first quarter alone, where I think we have like pieces that we can build off of and and get better at. And I think it's just kind of savoring those and building on those as, as the year goes on. And there's still what, 10 games left, so I think there's plenty of opportunities to do so. Um, and I know it's it might seem gloomy right now, and, and it is, but. Um, you have to take those things and kind of run with them and allow that to to fester a little bit of confidence in you because there's there's tons of more opportunities. A lot of great teams we're going to have to go up against in the future here. So you got to take that and run with it. Is that hard to do? Like like you said, I mean, the running game did put up some pretty good numbers. I mean, you guys did move the ball well in the first half, but how hard is that to, to keep in mind when the overall result is? Yeah, you're always going to be fixated on the things that you can fix uh, or, you know, the kind of the bad stuff. Um, so, I mean, that yeah, it can be hard, I think. Um, so you have to, you have to kind of be selective in your memory a little bit in terms of like, okay, kind of flush the bad stuff now. And once we get through tape here today and, and, and build on the good things, but it's kind of that selective memory a little bit. Um, but it, it can be tough, especially, you know, day after a game and kind of reviewing everything. How hard are the coaching staff and how critical are they after a performance like that when you watch the film? Yeah, I'd say they'd be. Uh, I'd say they'd be very critical. I mean, they're like I said, the score indicates that there wasn't a whole lot of great out there, and um, obviously they're going to be. They'll be tough on us, and we deserve it too. So that's part of that's part of Mondays in the NFL. After you lose, and you just got to take it and move on. Do you feel like this locker room has been good at that this year? I I would say so. Um, I still feel like there's there's confidence and energy throughout the week and. And going to the next game, I don't think anyone's too, anyone's been hanging their head too much. Um, you know, once we get the week going, and, and you know, kind of those Friday, Saturday, Sunday lead up to the game. So, yeah, I felt like you know, I felt like the energy was still good going into this week. And um, yeah, I think guys have been have done a decent job of that. I think everyone's been professionals and knowing what the nature of the NFL is and and how you kind of have to have that short memory. Is there potential to be too good at it? Maybe. Um, I don't know if you can ever be too good at, at, at flushing stuff in the NFL just because of how obviously you want to remember your stakes and, and improve on them. And, and we do that and we do that a lot. That's what Mondays are for, like I said. But um, like even if you have a great game, you still kind of have to flush that and move on to your next opponent. So I think ev that's a skill everyone has to have in the NFL, whether you're good or bad. And it's just the nature of, you know, once today ends, we'll be moving on to a different opponent. And you have to be ready for them. And you can't just sit there and dwell on your mistakes. Um, but I see, your, I see what you're saying, but to me, it's a, it's a really important skill. Historically, one and six is sort of a point of no return moment for a team, but as you said just a moment ago, you got a lot of football games left to play this year. Where is your motivation right now with a lot of football left to play? Anytime that there's going to be a game in the schedule and we're playing, there's always motivation to win. At least that's always been my mentality, so I don't really care about, you know, percentages and, you know, making this and, you know, what a record might end up being. If we're going out there and we're playing the game, there's going to be motivation to win. That's just, I think that just has to be everyone's mentality. Peter called the last two games embarrassing. He said you got to flush it. What are your feelings on it? Yeah, I kind of go the same thing. Uh, that was that was one of the toughest days I've had playing football. Uh, it's, it was rough, but got to turn the page, got to get ready to play again. What's the degree of, uh, I know, it, it, the system is that, that you turn the page on it within 24 hours, but there are a lot of things that have been going on with this team that seems like you guys need to kind of hold on to and be conscious of as you go forward. So what's the, what's the line there? Yeah, definitely uh, got to dive into the tape, got to make the corrections and uh, know what we need to work on. And then when we say turn the page, that's kind of what we mean too. We're still working on the stuff that we got to get corrected, but also preparing to play the next week. You got to be able to flush it and uh, mentally and kind of move on and kind of take the next step to keep moving forward. How hard is it to 
to face so many short fields like you guys did yesterday. But I guess, but on the other hand, do you guys still need to make it some, you know, some of those stops? In I mean, yeah, guys? defensively, we talked about it before the game. Uh, just kind of, you don't control how you enter the field, but you control how you leave it. So wherever they spot the ball, we got to go play defense. We got to get a stop. So. Yeah. Short field where it seemed like the whole team bought the run and the, the receiver was wide open. What was going on on those? Just got to have better eye discipline. You guys see that you've given up 86 points in the last two weeks after what was a pretty good start to the season. Oh, how frustrating is that? And how do you put your finger on what happened? Yeah, uh, the last two weeks, I think a lot of what we've given up, like I uh, kind of hit on what we just said, was it's been discipline. It's been guys uh, just kind of lapses in little places. So we just got to stay on the same page, communicating and uh, and play discipline football. You guys are still sitting on two turnovers. I know this is something we talk about every week. Is, is it as simple as bad luck, or do you have to do more? Man, we got to do more. We got to find a way to get the ball. Uh, got to got to get punches out of it. We got to affect the quarterback. We got to. Uh, make plays in coverage and just find a way to to get the ball. I mean, that's that's a huge determinant in wins and losses in this league, and we got to find a way to take it away. The first month or so, it, kind of one of the messages around this team is that you guys are a lot closer than maybe the record would show after a bad loss like that one in Detroit. Is that still the feeling, uh, or has that shifted? I mean, yeah, if you would have told me uh, – in training camp, I think most people would agree. Like we wouldn't, we wouldn't think we're in this spot, but we put ourselves in a big hole, and all we can do is stick together and try to try to climb out of it. We're going to keep fighting, and that's all we can really do at this point. Are you guys fragile right now, like when things go bad. I mean, I feel like uh, anytime there's adversity, you either come together or you fall apart, and so we're focused on coming together and uh, trying to push through and keep fighting, uh, keep keep pushing forward. Yeah. You feel like you've done a good enough job of coming together up to this point. I mean, I feel like I feel like guys are playing together. Like I said, it's we've been handling adversity. There's been a lot of it, and uh, we're just going to try to keep sticking together, keep moving forward. On, the, on some of the punt returns, it looked like there was an awful lot of space when the returner first got it, more so than normal yesterday. Uh, did you think? Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I feel like yeah, we got to be better in every phase. Um, Special teams, defense, offense. We didn't play good enough to win, and especially in these coverage units, we gotta we gotta find a way to get down there and make plays.